Hello again, World War I scholars. Mr. Deegan with another VidNotes video. We're on to the last lesson of Unit 7, Lesson 5. In this lesson, we're going to be going to Russia and talk about the Russian Revolution that made Russia exit World War I early. Our story involves Tsar Nicholas II, who was kicked off his throne. It also involves Vladimir Lenin, who uses Karl Marx's communist ideas to form the Soviet Union, a new government in Russia. And when Lenin dies, his successor, the man who takes his place, is Joseph Stalin, who's a dictator in the Soviet Union during World War II. We're going to learn about all of these men today. And our guiding questions for today why did a revolution erupt in Russia during World War I? Question number two, how did communism rise in Russia? Let's give you some background on Russia. Tsarist Russia entered World War I as an absolute monarchy. Remember, Tsar means emperor in Russian. And this absolute monarchy had sharp class divisions between the nobility and the peasants. The grievances of workers and peasants were not resolved by the Tsar. As you can see in these protest posters and workers on the streets of St. Petersburg, Russia, they were not satisfied. Also, there was inadequate administration in World War I that led to a revolution and an unsuccessful provisional government, a temporary government. A second revolution by the Bolsheviks created the communist state that ultimately became the USSR, a.k.a. the Soviet Union. And here is the leader of the Bolsheviks, Vladimir Lenin. Here is Tsar Nicholas. He is Russia's last monarch. Tsar Nicholas II ruled Russia from 1894 to 1917. Why did Tsar Nicholas II become unpopular in Russia? Few reasons. Number one, in 1905, Japan defeats Russia in a naval war in Manchuria, that's north of China, and Korea. And here you see a cartoon that shows a stronger Japanese soldier with a Japanese flag behind him defeating a Russian soldier. What happened? Well, Russia and Japan were competing for spheres of influence, places of foreign trade, in Manchuria and Japan. And in February of 1904, Japan launches a surprise attack against Russia. And this loss to Japan is a national embarrassment for Russia. Look at how much more land Russia has, how much more power it has. It is the favorite versus the underdog Japan, but the underdog kicks butt. And by May of 1905, Japan's navy has sunk all Russian ships in battle and inflicts 90,000 casualties on Russian troops. In addition to Russia's defeat in the hands of the Japanese, number two, Russian peasants experienced a food shortage and the government made it difficult for peasants to own land. So peasants in Russia start to say, our leader is incompetent. He does not know how to do his job. That's why Tsar Nicholas II becomes unpopular. There's no food, people don't own land, that creates dissatisfaction. Number three relates to World War I. Tsar Nicholas II becomes unpopular because there are high casualties in World War I for Russian troops. And the Russian citizens start saying to the Tsar, is this war worth it for us? Let's take a look at the casualty count. So the population of Russia is about 160 million. The military deaths during World War I was 1.8. Civilian deaths was about 1.5. The total deaths is 3.3 million people. And those who came back to Russia from the battlefield wounded, that was 6 million. 
So one of every five people who died in World War I was a Russian. Russians feel that they are carrying the burden of this war for the Allied powers. And January 22nd, 1905 is Bloody Sunday. All of the frustrations against Tsar Nicholas II finally come to a head. We're in St. Petersburg, Russia, the city that Peter the Great built. What happens on this day? Unarmed protesters, led by a priest, Father Gapan, marched to Tsar Nicholas's palace to submit a petition. So here are the protesters, and here is their leader, a priest, and here are the palace guards. And here's the entrance to the palace. The palace guards open fire on this crowd and hundreds of protesters are killed. And after this mass shooting, riots break out. And here is a sketch of the protesters after they have been shot. This is the spark that starts the unrest. How does Tsar Nicholas II then lose power? After Bloody Sunday, a political group gains Russian citizen support, and that group is called the Bolsheviks. Who are the Bolsheviks? They support communism and the ideas of Karl Marx redistributing wealth so that all have an equal amount. And the Bolsheviks are led by the political leader Vladimir Lenin, who embraces Marx's communism. And Lenin has a campaign slogan of sorts. We'll give you peace. We'll give you bread. We'll give you land, Russian people, which sounds like a good proposal. In March 1917, the revolution removes Tsar Nicholas II from power. 200,000 workers strike and protest in the streets of St. Petersburg, and a provisional or temporary government replaces Tsar Nicholas II's monarchy. Here you see the people in St. Petersburg Square protesting. Let's take a look at this provisional government. It was in place for eight months in 1917, and it ruled once the Tsar had abdicated or given up its throne. What does the provisional government not do? It does not exit the war, World War I. It does not provide food for the peasants. It does not redistribute land. In short, it does not solve the average Russian's problems. The people then form Soviets. These are local councils consisting of workers, peasants, soldiers. And many of these Soviets have more political power than the actual government that has been formed. This is Alexander Kerensky. He's the leader of this provisional government. It's quickly becoming clear that this provisional government has little power. To November 1917, the Bolshevik Red Guard arrests members of this provisional government. And here are members of that Red Guard. Here is a headline from an article from the New York Times dated November 9th, 1917. Extremists rise to power in Russia. Who is the leader of these extremists? It's Vladimir Lenin. What do the Bolsheviks do once they gain power? They redistribute land to peasants and they withdraw Russia from World War I, which is what most of the Russian citizens want. After the Bolsheviks seize power, a civil war erupts in Russia because the Bolsheviks don't represent everyone. So when was the civil war in Russia? From 1917 until 1923, who was fighting it? the Bolshevik Reds versus the non-revolutionary Whites. Some Russians don't want extreme change. What was the cost? Five to nine million Russians die in this civil war. And what was the result? The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, AKA the USSR, also known as the Soviet Union, is formed. And here's a propaganda poster that shows the non-revolutionary whites fighting the red dragon, the Bolshevik reds. The Bolsheviks win. The dragon wins. 
end. After the Bolsheviks win, Vladimir Lenin becomes the first leader of the Soviet Union. Here's the Soviet Union flag with the hammer and sickle representing the worker. Lenin's most important achievement is his new economic policy. What is the new economic policy? It is a mix of capitalism and communism. This man negotiates. He says the government controls banks, trade, and large industries in the Soviet Union, and private individuals still control small businesses. Peasants are allowed to own their own plots of land. It's not owned by the government. This is a mix. Lenin dies in 1924. He becomes sickly in his old age and has a series of strokes. His successor, the man who takes over, is Joseph Stalin. Here he is in a propaganda poster. He wants to take complete control of Soviet society. How are Lenin and this man Stalin different? Well, both are members of the Bolshevik party. Both embrace communism. However, Stalin wanted the government to control all businesses and all land in the Soviet Union. And Stalin felt that the government should have more power than it currently did. In fact, we know now that before his death, Lenin wanted Stalin out of power. Lenin was suspicious of Joseph Stalin's true intentions. Preview for next unit. Lenin's suspicions are true and Stalin becomes a dictator. He joins other dictators in World War II. But before that point, we have the interwar period, the failure of the League of Nations and the Great Depression felt by all. This is from 1919 to 1939. Until next lesson, this is Mr. Deegan signing off.